welcome to our Bio as Symbiotic podcast. Uh, joining me today is Jacine Greenwood, founder and CEO of Rococo Botanicals. Rococo Botanicals now distributing across four continents, multiple international awards. Very nice to have you. I will mention also known as a fairy godmother of skin. Welcome, Jacine. Thank you, Ian. Such a pleasure to be here. Absolutely great. All right. So could you just start by telling us a little bit about your journey in formulating skincare products and what really motivated you to start Rococo Botanicals? So my journey actually began when I originally became a beauty therapist and a registered nurse, and I couldn't find anything for my acne-prone skin. And then I managed to find a few products that helped to sort of control it, but didn't really get rid of it. And then I started aging. And then I thought, well, this is <laughs> And so I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find anything that wasn't going to make me break out or make me sensitive. And so that was the impetus for me developing my brand Rococo um, to provide a product that was safe for acne skins and sensitive skins. And because I also get eczema and so do all my children. So for me, that was really important, something that was great for the skin barrier as well. So when you start talking about the development of your products, like what, was, what was your approach towards formulation? So initially when I first started formulating, it was all about the skin barrier. Initially it was all the skin barrier. So if you want to suppress inflammation in the skin, you need to have a healthy, healthy barrier. If your barrier is, in, is not functioning properly, you will lose moisture, you'll get dehydrated, you'll get inflammation. Um, so that was my primary focus, as well as avoiding irritants in the skin and ingredients that would clog pores. Um, because obviously most of our clients are acne prone and they have had the same struggles that I've had with my skin. But the sensitivity and the barrier, they sort of go hand in hand. Because if you can get the barrier intact and balanced, a lot of the sensitivities tend to die down. Yeah, right. There, there's, there, there's actually a lot in that. Luckily, we're going to touch on some of those in more detail as we go through it. But before we get kind of get into some of the, the, the details of that, I do want to just touch on, you know, your, your brand and particularly your, your products within the brand, what actually sets them apart and what actually makes them so different compared to what else is out there? I think what sets them apart is the rapid results. And so when I'm formulating something, often I get told within industry, you can't fix things. I don't believe that. I, that's, that's a mindset to me. And so when you think something can be fixed, if you think at all great R&D or breakthroughs have come because someone thought something was possible, and so they kept looking for a solution. If you don't think something's possible, your brain will not even give you those concepts or ideas for you to even take action on. So for me, formulating a product is one, looking at journal studies and looking at what is actually happening in the skin. If you can't understand what's happening in the skin, how do you fix it? You can't. And so there's a lot of time that goes into actually understanding anatomy and physiology and pathophysiology and what's dysfunctional in the skin and having a look what cytokines are involved and inflammatory markers. And from there, almost going backwards and finding ingredients and actives that are going to target those specific pathways so that you get a dramatic result. So that's how I tend to do everything. I also have a bit of intuition in there, which is gut instinct. And I've, I've, I've got a very strong gut instinct on ingredients. And when I have that instinct, I follow it because those ingredients, I end up creating something that is blows even my mind from that perspective. You know, it was really interesting then. The note that I wrote was science versus intuition. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, literally, that is so, so. So what is science versus intuition? intuition because because obviously if it's just you can't have one with that out the other to get the results you've been getting no no and it's it's quite interesting with the intuition often i'll get ideas about something yeah. and they'll just seem so random and crazy and then blow me down i'll go on to google scholar yeah. and there is a ton yeah. of research on this idea that i had that i never even knew about and so that's where the intuition and the science marry. Um, they don't always marry because sometimes a journal study hasn't been on it, but I yeah. trust it because whenever I've had it, it's led me down to some glorious results and it, it, beyond my expectations. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's amazing how you kind of bring the two together. Um, I couldn't help but notice on some of your socials, you've had considerable success using 
the bio as personal care ingredient in some of your formulations. Do you mind touching on that for a little bit? If if you wouldn't mind, can I start with the product? You know, yep. what, what is the product and how did you actually incorporate the bio as symbiotic into that? So I will confess, we actually haven't named this yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but we are so excited about it. So we're actually trying to come up with names yeah. at the moment. Um, at the moment, we're doing our clinical trials, and then we will also be doing our, our testing on it. But we we chose it because it's a life um, symbiotic. So it's the mm. prebiotics and your postbiotics and your probiotics all in one. And we, we love the fact that it was live and that it was stable. And microbiome, it's so involved with many skin conditions. And so even acne, like there's a dysfunction of the microbiome. Rosacea, there's a dysfunction. Atopic dermatitis, all of them. And the microbiome changes as we age as well. So for me, I'm focused on the microbiome in particular because I think that we don't realise how much bacteria and the way they interact with each other on the skin, how important that is for skin health. So I chose it for that reason. I thought initially when I used it, we would get a reduction in inflammation, a, mm. you know, like a calmness of the skin. Mm. I was not expecting the results that we've been getting with almost like the forehead filling out, jowls lifting, um, the clarity of the skin completely changing. It's like it's reversed five years off in like three days. Jowls lifting. I it's jowls lifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, 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 you've, now you've got me interested. Um I think, uh, you know, I was, I was actually going to ask you about the results. What are you yeah. expecting what you've done? I want to just actually go back to probably the qu previous question I had and you started talking about the microbiome. Is that an evolution in your thinking? Because initially you're just talking about skin barrier, protecting the skin barrier. Is this something that's kind of recent and becoming? Yeah, well, de definitely it is. Like I think the thing of it is is often a lot of skin conditions that classically – we've thought of skin dysfunction. It's only new research that has shown it's, it's actually microbiome related mm -hmm. and that modulating the microbiome actually changes skin structure. So one of the things I found quite fascinating is that with the rise of cesarean births, we mm -hmm. are getting more eczema. And there's a reason why. And that's because normally when you have a normal birth, um, and no Caesar, you will get a transfer of microflora through the birth process into the mouth of the baby. And that's not happening anymore. So we have had a rise of, um, I would call them planned pregnancies, where mm. people are so busy that they book things in. Now, there is obviously reasons why people have cesareans, but those babies are at a distinct disadvantage from the first moment in life because they're not getting that microbiome transfer from mum to the baby, which sets their immunity up. There's also a lot of women who don't breastfeed anymore either. And I know this could be a contentious topic, but it's true. And if you look at the research, those first few days of life are so important for baby's immunity. And that all has an impact on the microbiome. So if, they, if, they, if they're not having a normal birth, the baby's microbiome is different from birth. They're finding a rise in eczema. So for all my children were normal birth, um, but again, they've got my genetics. So my dad had eczema, all three children of mine have eczema. Um, and so for me, the microbiome is important because we often, we have had this approach previously where it's annihilate all bacteria. Yeah. And that's not the approach that yeah. needs to be because we actually, like there's healthy strains of acne bacteria and there's strains that are virulent that cause vasodilation, inflammation, and a lot of trauma in the skin. But what's interesting is that the strains on a normal skin are not present on an acne prone skin. Yeah. And you have more acne bacteria on a, on a healthy skin than you do on one who has severe acne. Go figure that. So it's about the balance of it. And so rather than focusing on let's kill everything all, it's about let's modulate the immune response of the skin and probiotics have such a huge impact on the immune response of the, of the skin because they have the ability, especially prebiotics as well, they have the ability to modulate what's known as human beta defensin 2, yeah. which is the skin's immune system. So it can help it fight off things and help it regenerate quicker.
It also builds tight junctions a lot of them as well, so it helps prevent moisture loss. So they modulate so many functions, and I think I honestly think most formulators just have no clue what probiotics do. Well, and, and it's probably not just, it's probably just not a clue. I mean, I, it's not having a clue. It's probably also the ability to start embedding probiotics, prebiotics, you know, what we like to talk about yeah. as symbiotics. It's the ability to start embedding those in formulations. That probably hasn't been there either. It's been very challenging to do. Correct. I mean, because if, it, especially if it's live, that in itself is a challenge. Um, most of the ones that I've seen on the market haven't actually been true probiotics. They're more postbiotics, yeah. which they've been around for, you know, the bacterial cell yeah, lysates, they've been around for ages. So, but yeah, I think it's exciting because to have something that's live in a formula, that's groundbreaking. Yeah, it's, it, look, it certainly is. We're certainly excited about it. And we're very glad that you're, you're, you're excited about it as well. Have you had any, um, just going back to the socials, have, have you had any like fee, immediate feedback from your community that's been, oh, can you hurry up? Yeah, the, the first question they asked is, when is this out? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they, they are very, very excited. I think it's because of the rapid transformation. Um, because to, to me, that's, you know, it's only been three yeah. or four days for most people that are using it. And the results yeah. that they've been getting has been phenomenal. Yeah. And normally those types of results are something that we see at like at the two to three month yeah. mark, not yeah. three to four days. So, yeah, yeah they're, they're all excited. They're waiting for it to come out. They're dying yeah. to know more about it and what else is in there. And I haven't sort of put the information together for them yeah. yet. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're very, very excited for this to launch. Oh, that's good. Well, keep, <laughs> keep, keep, keep them excited. Um, so just in terms of that's obviously your first application. Yep. Um, how else do you see symbiotics fitting into your future product lines and innovation? Um, definitely in hair care, I yeah. see them playing a part um, because, again, skin doesn't stop just because our hair starts growing. Um, and we have a lot of clients that have scalp you know, dysfunction as well, whether that be dandruff, um, seborrheic dermatitis, psoriasis. So I definitely see it going in here. Um, but we're also now looking at toothpaste. Ever since my last Emirates flight where I discovered yeah. what's in their travel bags, I thought, yeah. we need to do toothpaste. Yeah. And, you know, like, again, the mouth microbiome, it's not really spoken about, but that impacts health. Well, it does. Uh, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's a fascinating. Like, when you look at everything, mouthwashes, everything, it's all antibacterial, mm -hmm. antibacterial. But I'd be interested to get your thoughts on that because I'm, I'm not sure that's 100% the right answer. I, I don't think it is, can I be honest. I mean, yeah. some of the studies I've read, they've said alcohol is actually detrimental in a mouthwash. Yeah. Um, so for me, look, I think the thing of it is it's not about making it antibacterial. I think things like plaque and things like that, it's about eliminating biofilm and balancing the microflora flora in mm. the mouth area. That's what I would perceive it. I haven't done a ton of research on it yet, Ian, but to me that would be like plaque is a biofilm. It's mm. a biofilm buildup. So to me, it's if you target that while still respecting the mucosa of the mouth and then you've got the probiotics in there, I think to me that could totally change the mouth care industry. I'd be curious mm. to see what this is going to do because, you know, if we could do that, you wouldn't also get stain build up on teeth. Stain build up is because um, substances or coffee or whatever it is, is adhering to the enamel and that's because there's nothing removing it properly without also damaging the enamel. I think the key word you you're touching on there was, was balance. It is we, balance. We, we, we talk a lot about balance. We talk a lot about biodiversity within the microbiome. And, and I think those those key things there is what exactly what you're talking yep. about is where, where we need to be targeting. Yep. Um, look, I don't want to give any of your competitors <laughs> a, a, a leg up here, but, but I mean, is there any advice or, you know, to other for Given your position as probably a leader in this space, is there any advice you give to other formulators? Uh, look, honestly, if you haven't tried this ingredient, you really need to get on it. It's, it's phenomenal. Like, yeah. I've been in the industry now for, we've been formulating for nearly, I think it's 17 years. And it's pretty rare I come across something that really lights my fire. Mm. Um, and this is definitely one of them. Like, uh, the results are beyond, like I said, my mm. expectations. Like, 
you don't sometimes realize how powerful something is until you actually put it into a trial formula and you start using it. Um, because I mean, all the, the literature in the world doesn't substitute for first-hand experience of using something at the end of the day. So uh, we definitely will be putting it into more products. We are going to bring out three masks as well um, to um, complement our, our serum that we will be releasing and they will have the lemon myrtle and yuzu will have a pomegranate and a cucumber and mint as well, which we plan on pairing up with the biotica water for clinics um, in a beautiful gift set. So we're going to have a little bit of a different focus for each of those masks, but the, the symbiotic will be a huge part of that because it'll be in every single product. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad you met. I could, my next question was going to be again self-serving. In my role as G yep. general manager for Biotica Water, you know, a lot of you've been doing some trials with yes. that as well. And again, this isn't this isn't the topical microbiome. No. This is the internal. Just a couple of sentences, just around the thoughts around the impact that you've seen there too. Well, the Biotica Water has been amazing. Like. I get a lot of gut dysfunction because I am a rosacea sufferer as well. Um, and what I found when we were actually um, taking it regularly, because we do need to buy some more, um, when we were taking it regularly, I got far less uh, gastrointestinal symptoms. But what totally blew us away was that we actually got our staff to just drink one can a day for a month. No other changes? No other changes. No yeah. skincare changes. Yeah. They weren't allowed to change anything else. And the difference in the pigmentation, yeah. the difference in the uh, texture of the skin, yeah. the pore size, the clarity of the skin, it didn't have that um, almost oily look anymore. Um, it was it was matte, comfortable. Yeah, yeah it, it was great to see because... Often I think we don't see those changes subtly that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And so to put the photos together, every single one of my team members was so surprised when they yeah. saw it. They went, wow, yeah. that's yeah. made such a difference. And I'm, I'm also a firm believer that, and we do say this to our clients, look, you can apply all the topicals in the world, but it is the gut, the skin, yeah. and the brain are all connected. And if you don't have a healthy gut, that's what all your immunity is for a start then your skin's never going to be healthy. No matter what mm -hmm. product you put on the top, mm -hmm. you have to have that balance. Again, the word balance. Yeah. It has to be all balanced. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I, just the, the way you talk about it, I can just tell your excitement. And, yeah. You know, as, as, look, as a result, we're super excited because this yeah. is really taking all of the work that we've been trying to do and pull yeah. it together over the last you know, three to five years. And it's you know, seeing the results in, in what you're getting is, is unbelievably exciting for us. One final question, and slightly off topic, but yep. you know, if there was one ingredient that you wish was available in the market that you can improve, what would that be? I, if there was something to break down fibrotic tissue, like scar tissue, that would be amazing. Um, you know, like there's a lot of ingredients out there that are great for heloid scars. They fl they flatten it, but they don't break it up. And, you know, at the moment, there's nothing out there unless you do something like microneedling or something else. Mm -hmm. But if there was something like that, that would be phenomenal because regrettably after surgery, mm -hmm. not everyone has the outcomes that they want. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes they do get fibrotic tissue that builds up and they don't like it, especially if it's in a visible spot. So that would be phenomenal if something like that came out. Send that over to the R&D team. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank Can't you. promise anything. Yeah. Look, it's a very exciting journey that we're on. As I said, your enthusiasm is extremely exciting for us. I certainly appreciate your time today. So thanks very much, Jessie. My pleasure, Ian. Thank you for having me. Yeah.